Hello Gunpla fans, this is DZ Maven here, and it's time for another Gunpla review. And squeezing in at the very last moment of Transformation May is the Master Grade Victory to Gundam Burka. I've been following my Instagram or seeing a few pictures on my Twitter. I have been trying to get this kit done before the end of May, and I have it done. Anyway, here it is, all complete and ready for display and everything. As you can see, it's all ready to get her in its Victory 2 Gundam mode. In addition here, I also had the extra core fighter displayed down below with it here. So, let's get this guy spinning around here. So you can see it from all sides as it is up on an action base in an okay pose. So, uh, let's talk about the details on this thing here. So, as typical of a Verkaw kit, it's actually pretty darn swell looking out of the box here. Um, this thing is very, very Katoki. This is the very essence of Hajime Katoki in a kit here. In case you didn't know, uh, Hajime Katoki designed the Victory Gundam specifically for the Victory Gundam series here. So, it's really not too far off from what he originally designed for it here. So it's not really much of a redesign, it's just the actual Victory 2 in Master Grade form, basically, is what it is. Um, with his own personal touches, such as lots of water slide decals and lots of decals all over, basically. <laughs> but I mean, overall, the, the overall aesthetic of this thing, it looks really, really good um, out of the box here when you put it together. This looks great. It looks good in all the different configurations it has. Uh, the two core fighters look great. Uh, the transform top part and bottom part look good, um, especially when they're combined with the core fighter. It looks really good here. Um, there's really not a whole lot I can pick about it on the visual side. It just it just really looks really good. Um, there you do get a few stickers for a few minor details on this kit here. Mostly a lot of these little red rings that are basically they are hard points on the Victory 2 Gundam. You do get stickers for those. Um, I did not use those. I went ahead and actually painted all the red rings on here. In addition, there is a black sticker that goes on the very end of the um, Minoski wing drive system that's back here. Again, I just went ahead and painted that in, so I didn't even bother with the stickers on that. Actually, I really did not use any stickers on this at all. Even the eyes, I went ahead and painted the eyes in, and the head cameras and everything on that is all painted in on here, so... So I really did not use the, use the uh, stickers on this at all, anywhere. So, and for me, even the little cameras on the beam rifle are all painted in as well here. So, um, really, um, that's really probably the only thing on this. You would probably be a slight detractor detail-wise is the stickers. Uh, the other thing, if I want to really pick about, are these clear landing gears. Um, I'm not sure why Bandai, Bandai got into the habit of doing this. Um, I don't know if they started with the Gundam 3.0, started doing this, but these clear landing gears, I really do not like these. Um, probably because, you know, I do try to paint things, and this is an entire clear piece, and it means I'd have to spray paint a primer on this thing and then hand paint it, which is just a lot more work. So I'm not really sure what aesthetic Bandai is trying to go for in these clear landing gear pieces, but... I would really have preferred, you know, just a gray landing gear that I could just stick into the bottom of it and maybe detail paint it and be done with it. Otherwise, it's a lot more work to make this look right. So, I, I don't know. I don't really I don't really care for these things. I mean, it's not the worst thing. I mean, I'd rather have them than not have them, but I, I just don't like the look of them, really. That's probably my, my only personal complaint here. Um, as you can see, I got the one on the bottom core fighter here. It's... You almost can't really see it because it's so invisible looking. <laughs> but uh, visual wise, again, this thing is really, really nice looking. Really nice looking. Uh, so it gets a 9 out of 10 for me on the detail score. So it's pretty good. Alright, so let's talk about articulation of this guy here. I'm going to go ahead and stop him as he's facing forward here. A little bit like so, be good. Alright, so let me get the core fighter out of the way here for a second. And a little shock to you, can move aside. 
So I have him up on the action base right now. He doesn't have any problems standing on his own. So he's actually pretty stable and well balanced, I would say. Um, let me bring him in here. So, um, as you can expect, this guy articulation is not great because he has a fully transformable kit. Um, starting up at the head here, he's got a good range of head motion. You can look up a not too far, and whoop, he came off the action base here. But you know what? I'll just hold him for a moment while we're doing this here. So, let me bring the light up. There we go. So, pretty decent head articulation. You can look down pretty well. Not up too far, but you, you do start to run into some problems when you look at the arms and the legs on this thing. There is no waist articulation in here at all, so don't really expect any of that. Um, for me to try and explain why there is no waist articulation on a mash grade kit in 2015 when this came out is probably a little redundant. The chest sort of splits in the splits three ways. It's really the weirdest thing, really, when you think about it. The top half comes off, and then the torso is literally split in half down the side and comes apart. It's it really is the weirdest thing. And the skirt armor goes with the top half, not with the bottom half, as you would intuitively think so. But it's it's, it's very weird. Let me put it that way. But um, getting sidetracked here. Back to the arms here. Um, believe it or not, there is a very, very tiny bit of a cavicle joint they have tried to incorporate into this kit, but it doesn't really, it doesn't really work very well, because part of the problem is, is that the peg for the arms is so shallow on this that there really is barely any range of movement on this here. I don't know if you can tell there. This kind of goes forward just slightly before it starts to work its way out. Um, if you move this around too much, it will come off. Uh, the shoulder can flip up like that. That's for transformation, really. Um, it will rotate at the joint, like so. And it does have a double joint in the arm. And this little elbow pad piece can move around. In addition to the beam shield emitter thing, can slide out and move around a little bit here if you need it to. Um, now, there is a problem here, but you need to be, kind of be aware of with this elbow joint here. But I have experienced several, several times here including with the uh, shoulder joint up here as well. This thing has a tendency to come out if you move it around too much, and there it goes. This came right out. As you can see, there's only a little clip here holding this piece in, and it likes to come out a lot when you're trying to move it around. Um, in addition, if you try to move the arm up too far like this here, it will come out sometimes, because again, it's the same sort of clip and I don't know if it'll pop out here. Maybe not. That's that's okay. But it will come out sometimes up there as well. And you have to kind of work this elbow joint back in again. Which is a really annoying thing to do. Uh, the hand is on a little ball joint. It moves around pretty well here. And this one can flip up a little bit like that. But this piece is mainly for the transformation really. So I wouldn't really worry about that too much. Uh, moving on down. The waist armor can move up and out away pretty well here. That just comes up like that, not too far. Uh, there is another piece here that opens up on this for skirt armor. Um, people say this is possibly for the addition of um, one of the additional armor packs for the Victory 2 Gundam at some point in the future. Um, it has been two years since then, and Bandai has made no announcement of a assault pack or a buster pack for this. So um, at this point, I wouldn't really hold your breath on that for this kit. I mean, it would be nice, but I don't think Bandai feels that invested into this to do that. Back skirt armor won't really move around too much. Um, it will flip forward in the transformation mode, but in the Gundam mode, it doesn't really move around any. There are these little back panels that can open up like that. I guess there's an additional thruster in there or something. You can just keep them closed most of the time, I think. Now, if you look up in here, you can kind of see the hip joint area, and kind of you can kind of see where one of the the problem is in here. Um, I know with the original Master Grade Victory Gun, a lot of people complain about the hip joint being extremely loose on it and not tight enough to hold it. The Victory Two does not really have that problem. It's really very really tight and secure. Um, you can move the leg up like that, and there's a decent bend in the knee right there. A little bit of separation right here at the knee part here. In addition, this little knee part has a little piece that can open up. Let's see if I can get it here. 
it has to kind of slide forward a little bit. It's, it's sometimes a little tricky to do. There we go. Kind of slides forward a little bit like that. Too for an additional thruster in there, but it's all right. But as you can see with the sip here, it's not really gonna. It doesn't really rotate that much at all, and it won't really come up any at all either before it starts to split down here. So it's pretty limited at the hip, I would say. Uh, move on down here to the foot here. This little piece can move around pretty nicely. It's on a ball joint. Uh, the foot can move forward about that far. Move doesn't move back that far, about that much. And the, and the toe here can bend back about that far. Actually, for transformation, it's actually really neat here because this back heel tucks in like so, and then the foot will just come in like that. It's pretty neat, and this little middle piece here will fold in out of the way. You can see right there, it's this folded in. Also, these little side pieces on the side of the foot will move a little bit. Uh, again, this is really for transformation, not so much for the mobile suit mode of this. This little piece will move just slightly, but uh, moving on to the back here where the Minoski drive is, they will open up obviously like so, and they got a little bit of wiggle room to move around a little bit here, but not a whole lot. You can move in and out a little bit like so, and around a little bit, but that's pretty much the extent of it. It's not it's not really a huge range of articulation for that, um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for the articulation. As far as I'm aware, there is no way to have the cockpit be visible while it's in Gundam mode. Um, I don't really think there's a way to make it visible. So, because this whole piece slides in and out, but you would have to take the top off to get it to slide out. So it's not going to slide out while it's like this here, as far as I'm aware here. So, stand him up. And you can see, he stands pretty well. I mean, he's pretty well balanced here, so there's like no problem with that here. Um, but this kit did come out in 2015, so it is still a very new Master Grade, I'd say. And for a kit that came out in 2015, articulation-wise, it's really kind of poor, I would say, overall. It, it actually reminds me a lot of the articulation of the Master Grade S Gundam, which I did in my last review. <laughs> in fact, it's really about the same as that, which is a kit that came out a really long time ago. And... You know, because of that, and some of the few issues with the arms coming off and everything, it kind of, it, it gets a 5 out of 10. So, not a great score for a Master Grade in terms of articulation, so, but, you know, I gotta, gotta be honest with you. This kit's whole thing is transformation and articulation took a major hit to this thing as a result of it, so. So, yeah, that's what it is articulation-wise. But let's move on to something that's a little better with this kit here, which is the extras. As you can see right now, I've got the beam rifle on here. Uh, I'm not going to pull it back off because it's on there really good right now. Um, as you can see, it's got those additional sensors sticking out of the side right now here. So probably sitting there like wondering, like, like how how many how many sensors does a beam rifle need? Well, this one's got four of them. Technically five if you want to count the one that's actually inside on the little mini beam pistol that's inside of it. It's it's really neat here because the whole beam rifle is modular. It comes apart into several pieces and you can kind of reconfigure it with um you can either have it as a little beam pistol that's inside of there or you can have the single shot grenade launcher which is on here or you can configure it with this um grenade launcher pack which I guess has multiple grenades in it. Uh it does make the beam rifle slightly heavier but I really haven't had any issue with the uh, Gundam holding it. Um, that kind of brings me to another thing here, because I, I have seen in a lot of other reviews that people have a lot of problems having the Victory 2 holding its weapons. I really have not had that much trouble having it hold its weapons, to be honest. It could be because I top-coated the kit and there's some paint on there, which kind of helps give it a little more grip. That could be why. Um, but as you can see with his beam rifle, he's he's got it. He's not, hold, he's not letting go of it. So, it's on there. Um, additionally with this on here, it's slightly heavier, but you can still hold it. And, uh, didn't really have any problems with the beam savers, or even the beam fan. Um, even though that's really, really heavy. Um, but, I would say just kind of play around for a little bit if you can't get the holes weapons. You can always take a little bit of paint in there. That might make it a little more tacky and easier for it to hold its weapons, I would say. Uh, speaking of the beam savers and beam weapons here, we do have 
two beam sabers with some very thin pink blades on them. I have them out here right now, but they are very tiny. Very, very tiny beam sabers. Um, but the beam saber blade length is about average, I'd say, but the saber handles are really tiny. You get two of those. They are stored inside the little red beam thingies that are on the elbows. And you get your beam fan, which is this thing right here, with the other beam saber on there. And it's pretty interesting. It is kind of heavy. Oops, it fell out of my hands there. You know, again, I didn't really have too much trouble getting the Victory 2 to hold this here. Just got to be a little careful with it, that's all. Be a little mindful. But it's a pretty nice looking beam effect part, though. I, I like it, though. It's pretty neat. And a giant beam fan. I'm going to smack you. Burn. Smack. Like a paper fan, almost. Other than that, you do get... Uh, a lot of uh, finger pieces here for the kit here, like so here. Uh, you get a pair of trigger hands, you get a pair of beam saber holding hands, you get some open extended fingers, and you get a couple of fist pieces. Uh, right now, obviously I got the trigger hand and one of the open hands on there here. It's the swappable hands in case you couldn't tell. Obviously this kit's hands are way too small to put articulated fingers on, which it's probably a good thing, but, I mean, Bandai probably could have done a little better with the grip on the weapons. I mean, even though I didn't really have a lot of problems, Bandai probably could have done a little better there, to be honest. I, I will I will give people that. In addition, you do get a pair of these little dummy plugs that go into the hands while it's in transformation mode. They can be positioned either like so, for sort of a closed look, or they can be like this for grabbing the beam rifle and the... Uh, the top half mode and you do get some several action based connectors to be honest here you get these two for the core fighters which are I found to be a little tricky to put in you have to kind of shove them in through the back until they hook in and then the other problem is is that they are really hard to take back out again <laughs> so be careful with these I would say just be careful with them you do get your standard action based connector which is on there and before I forget we do have our beam shield effect part which is really nice looking it's got this little lightning effect on the front of it like this like so it's really nice and um, the kit doesn't really have any problem holding this so it's really nice I like it cool and probably the only last thing I can talk about is you do get your little tiny shock T figure right there I put a little panel wash on it so you can see it but you get that as well in addition to an entire extra core fighter, which is a really nice extra to have. So, you can see what this looks like as a core fighter without having to take the one on the kit off. Um, I have a little Marvit, or Marbit, or whatever whatever her name is is in there. She has the purple helmet. That's all I know. So, she's in that one there. But Overall, the extras for this are actually pretty good, um, all things considered. So... Even though the kit itself is kind of a brick here, you do have a lot of nice little extras to work with here. Uh, the only thing I could probably really strike it on, I'd say, is that is the Wings of Light, which Bandai released as a P Bandai extra for this. Um, really, it's just two pieces of plastic that you stick into the back of it. They really should have included that with this just right off the bat. I mean, it should not have been like an extra, whole extra thing for... $35 or so it's not really worth buying. I mean it looks good I think it looks cool on the kit, but it still just came with the kit to begin with So I have to kind of strike the kit a little bit for that But it only loses one point so it gets a 9 out of 10 for me on extras here So it is still pretty good here. So I mean for what you're what you're paying for you do get a lot of nice stuff here All right, so let me talk a little bit about the transformation of this kit and I'll show you the Show you all the uh, pictures I have of it because I'm not going to go through transformation on this kit again. So, I mean, I only transformed this kit one time, and I pretty much intend to kind of just leave it that way. You do get your two core fighters, and they can be configured into the uh, top half and bottom half of the Victory 2 Gundam. Uh, transformation is not really that difficult, to be honest. Um, there are little little hooks and latches for everything to kind of hook into as you're transforming, as, you're, as it's transformed, so it all stays together pretty well. So, I mean, when it's all together, it actually holds together pretty well in both configurations. Uh, you don't really get any landing gears that fit for these configurations, so you do have to kind of display them up on an action base for best effect, because otherwise on the ground they're just kind of laying there. So I kind of realized as I was kind of putting this thing together that this thing, all these water slides all over this kit here, 
and kind of made, made me a little paranoid while I was putting this thing together and detailing it and with all these little water slides over a transforming kit um, I was becoming a little paranoid handling it so I kind of debated back and forth on top coating this thing and eventually I went, wound up top coating it anyway the downside is that a few of my panel lines did get a little fudged up because of it but overall I think having the protection on the decal was probably better better overall because you have to handle this thing a lot when transforming it and there are pieces that kind of tend to rub up against each other um, I'd say probably the biggest concern when transforming is probably the arms, er the arm area on it. Uh, the only way to get the arms to look right is you have to kind of pull them out of their sockets, sockets a little bit. And as I mentioned, the, the arm peg sockets are already kind of shallow to begin with here, so you can't really pull them out too far. Uh, the problem is that that shoulder armor piece is just, there's barely any space for it. And it does end up kind of rubbing against the torso quite a bit and it's kind of hard to make it look straight. I think that's kind of my biggest concern about the transformation on this here. But I mean, getting it back together, it's it's not bad. Once you put it all together into Gundam mode, it's actually pretty solid and everything stays together fine, so it, minus the elbows and the arms, of course, but um, overall the transformation is pretty good in it, I'd say. I think it's pretty cool to have, have transformations in Master Grades, but on the flip side, I do understand they kind of you kind of have to sacrifice the overall structural integrity and articulation of a kit in the process here. So it, it's a debate you'll have to have with yourself if, you, if it is worth having that gimmick or not. Um, which, of course, that leads me down to value here of the kit here. Uh, this Master Grade kit came out in December of 2015. So like I said, it's still a very new kit here. It retails for 4,800 yen which is about $43 uh, in US dollars here. A lot of times I see this kit going for quite a bit more than $43. I've seen it going for about 50 plus in a lot of places online that I've looked at. So I guess just kind of be aware and try to find a good deal on it. For a transforming kit, this is pretty neat here, but if you don't really care about that sort of thing, this kit might not be worth getting at that price. Uh, even $43 is a little bit on the higher end, especially for a gun that's actually not that big. But you are paying for a transformation gimmick and an entire extra core fighter here. But I mean, um, if you want a version of the Victory 2 gun that has more articulation to it, you might want to look at the high grade Universal Century version, uh, which came out a year prior to this in 2014. Uh, from what I've seen in pictures and everything, it looks to have some better articulation than the Master Grade. Uh, the only downside is you will have to probably do a little bit more detail painting on that figure, so. But it is a fraction of the price. It's only 1300 yen compared to the 4800 yen, what you're paying for this year, so. Um, you'll probably have to decide for yourself if that's worth it or not. Overall, I kind of feel like this Master Grey kind of has a, it has an average value to me. Um, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10 on the value score because it is still a really, really nice Master Grade, but it it may not be worth it for some people. Uh, especially those who don't like complex transformations, sacrificing articulation. Or for those who don't want to worry about water slide decals. The water slides on this are pretty nice, I will say that, but they if you put them on, you got to be really mindful of how you handle it and if you like to pose your kits it kind of makes you a little paranoid because there's so much moving around on this thing despite the fact that it doesn't really move that much when it's in Gundam mode so so overall um, I give the victory to Master Grade a 31 out of 40 here which I mean it's still a good Master Grade but it's got a few major issues with articulation that's really the biggest issue with this kit and it may not be the best thing for everyone. It kind of is, I mean, I don't know if I would really recommend it as a Master Grade for most people. This is really more of a advanced Master Grade, I would say. So only pick this up if you're probably well schooled on Master Grades and water, and water slide decals and dealing with complex transformations. Um, if you're new to Gunpla kits in general, do not get this kit because you are going to be so frustrated and, and aggravated by, by this thing. And to be honest, there were a few points where I did feel a bit frustrated when, when building this kit here. So that is something you just kind of got to be aware of with it and just take your time with it and be patient, I would say. 
so anyway i think that will be it for this review here um and that's going to be it for transformation may i feel like i'm done with trans transforming kits for a while i think i'm going to stick to simpler kits for the immediate future here no more transforming kits until i get to the zz for the car we'll we'll just leave it at that here for now so anyway i hope you enjoyed the review and found this informative um Thank you for waiting so long while I'll try to get this kit together and <laughs> reviewed here. I feel like it took a while here. I been, feel like I've been on this kit for a long time here. But it's finally done and it's out the, out the door for me. <laughs> so pretty much. <laughs> so anyway, I will see you guys next time in the next review here. And I hope you will have a happy June here. So June's coming up here. So more reviews coming. So anyway, take care guys. Bye bye.